4D Polaroid camera with a developing photo acrylic nail art tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hello everybody, in today's video I'm going to be showing you a 4D Polaroid camera design and I actually had this idea to make a Polaroid camera with pictures that come out of it back in NTNA and I, the New York challenge from Gel 2 and I decided not to go that route for NTNA which I now probably should have, oops, oh well, but I went, I just had this idea for a Polaroid camera, so I had to make it anyway. I hope you guys like it as much as I do. The picture that comes out has a thermal black powder on top of it, so if you rub it, when it comes out, it just looks black. And then if you heat it up by rubbing it or like sticking it against a hot cup of tea or something just to heat it up, you can see through it and you can see this pop art picture underneath, which I love. I hope you guys like this as much as I do, and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So I'm going to begin with a very, very thin overlay of white acrylic. So the reason we're keeping this so thin is this is just to white out the tip. It's not actually for the final color or anything like that. It's just to make it so that the following colors to create a pastel rainbow don't have to be so thick. So now to create a pastel rainbow gradient across the nail, I applied a little bit of pink at the cuticle, left a gap, and then applied a stripe of yellow, left a gap, applied a stripe of a pastel blue, and then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to start filling in my gaps. Well, then I'm gonna fill in the tip with purple. But then I'm going to go back through and start filling in the gaps. So I'm going to put some green between the yellow and the blue. And then I'm going to put some orange or some really very, like almost dreamsicle kind of an orange between the yellow and the pink. After all of that pretty little rainbow is sculpted there, I'm going to take and cap the nail with a layer of clear acrylic to make sure it's nice and strong. Both the layer of white and that little rainbow layer are very, very thin or this nail would not have any strength to it whatsoever. So to make sure that it is strong enough that it'll hold up, we're going to just cap it. And then after that's in place, then we're going to file the nail into shape with an e-file. So the e-file bit I'm using right now is just a, it's a pretty coarse little bit, barrel bit, and I'm going to go through that one and then I'm going to go through with another one that is much finer just to refine the surface texture and make it really easy to paint on. So now with a light tan acrylic I'm going to begin sculpting my camera on a nail form backing. So the Polaroid camera is actually very bulky. It's nice and big, it's very wide at the bottom, but we don't want it to look quite that bulky, but we do want it to have a visualization of the shape that you think of with a Polaroid camera where it's got kind of that top part that's a little bit flatter and then it sort of pops out at the bottom, sort of like a chin jutting out is what I like to think of it as. So first, the first layer you're going to sculpt is for that top part that's a little bit more narrow. Then I'm going to add this second part and I'm going to let it set up for just a moment. As you can see, I placed that bead down and then I just ignored it. I stared at it like it was, it's kind of like watching water boil or watching paint dry. Just kind of stare at it until it turns matte. And then you can push it up against that other piece and then you, as you can see, it's got a lot more height on it than that first bit that was sculpted. So press that up against the rest of that and just sort of hold it in place so that you don't have to worry about it um, like falling over or flattening. So just keep playing around with it until it is set up to the point where you know it's not going to tip over. And after you've reached that point, which as you can see, I just kept messing around with it until I was convinced it wasn't going to move. You're going to fill in and create more of like a slope between the the lower area of the camera and the higher area so that you don't have this 90 degree angle but more of a gradation. So after you have that nice and blended out with black acrylic we're going to be sculpting the next layer to the bottom of the camera. So we're working on this camera from the top of it down. So after you have that next we're going to do the same thing like we did with that bit of tan. We're going to place a bead of black acrylic down and then ignore it. It's just kind of funny the process of placing something and then not doing anything with it. It's a little bit nerve wracking for me because usually when you're working with acrylic, there's kind of this sense of urgency because you want to be able to complete the step before it sets and before you have to, you know, make sure you get all your details in it and all of that stuff. So to just place something down and then not worry about it for a while can kind of, you know, give you heart palpitations. If you're me, maybe not. Maybe you don't have that same urgency that I do but I always whenever I'm working with acrylic I'm kind of in a like a go 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 sign up kind of mindset but while you're waiting for your black acrylic to get almost 100% set I'm going to go through and I'm going to be adding the lens on the front of the camera and the different sensors that are on the front so that you don't have to worry or so that you've got all those sculpted in place and you when you get back to that black piece which I'm doing now as you can see it was still perfectly workable to get everything done like I needed to 
then you can go through and press that other bit of black up against the tan and it is extra important to let that black set up more so than maybe the tan was so that you don't accidentally get black pigment all over your tan acrylic and make it look stained and kind of kind of less desirable so you make sure that that isn't quite so sloppy that you have to work with it too much then i'm going to take some red acrylic and add another little circle to the left of the lens well left looking at it this way the right of the lens if you're behind the camera where you would be if you were yeah you get what i'm saying sometimes i just overthink some things but then we're going to be adding we're going to be sculpting three more pieces that we are not currently going to attach to the camera you're going to be sculpting a bottom piece and two side pieces and this is because you want to have a gap between the part of the camera that we have sculpted up there and this bottom edge that way you have a slot for your little polaroid to slide through the camera like it's being printed out so you're going to go ahead and sculpt those, sculpt that piece out, that bottom piece. And you can just eyeball it for size. You don't have to make sure it's exactly perfect. You can always A, file this camera if it gets too wide in a certain spot, or you can sculpt it a little thicker later on with some more black acrylic, which you're going to do anyway just to secure it. So if it doesn't end up being the exact perfect size, that's not really the end of the world. And then those little two side pieces are just going to be squares. Then glue the camera to the tip of the nail. You're pretty much covering up your purple layer, but that's okay. And then glue the two side pieces to the bottom of the camera. Little tiny bit of nail glue. Definitely use a tweezers. Try not to glue the side piece to the tweezers instead of the, instead of the camera, which is what I almost always do when I'm working with this kind of a thing. So just apply a tiny bit of nail glue. This isn't even enough nail glue to hold it together very well. It's just enough to hold it together long enough so that you can sculpt on top of it with more acrylic to make sure it is going to be sturdy in the long run so for right now this is just a very temporary layer and then glue the bottom of the camera to the bottom of those side pieces and as you can see i trimmed my side pieces so they weren't quite so long and you can do that i with a little manicure scissors you can trim skinny pieces of acrylic that way because it's so thin that the manicure scissors will just snip it without hardly any effort so then glue that last one onto the bottom adjust it on the sides to make sure that it's still looking good and then strengthen the bottom of the camera with more black acrylics like i said either way no matter if your pieces were perfectly sculpted in the exact right size and shape you're going to add more acrylic anyway and if you if they're too big you can always snip a little bit off like i had to it's not really um, a big deal so after you have that sculpted and it's all set up then we're going to be taking some acrylic paint and we're going to be adding some more details to our camera so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the little rainbow coming from the lens down to where the black portion of the bottom of the camera is. So you've got green. I'm sure you guys know the rainbow, but I'm going to do every other stripe just like I did up above so that I don't have to worry about it being too close. Or maybe not every other stripe, but try to start in the middle of the rainbow and then kind of work your way out. So instead of doing, you know, starting on the far end with red, maybe start on in the middle with a yellow. And so then go through and add the rest of those little details. A couple little highlights on the various parts of the camera. I put a little bit more red on top of the red circle. And then I'm going to add a circle around the lens and the inside of the lens to make it look like it's got a highlight on it. It doesn't have to be anything too crazy as far as highlights go. Just a little bit here and there to really make it look like it has some life and some shine to the lens. Then above your camera, because you've got all this lovely space with a rainbow background, we're going to have a bit fun, a bit of fun, and we're going to make a pun. If you guys know, I'm very punny. So if there's an opportunity to include a pun, I'm going to take it. I'm going to start by creating a very explosive looking speech bubble with white paint and just sort of fill that in. It doesn't have to be the same thing. No perfection required here, you guys. Have fun with it. Make a little swiggle wiggles all over the place. And then as you're letting that dry, I'm going to go above that a little further. And I'm going to write O like you're surprised. So create an O and then an H. And with these, I'm going to make one line or one side. So the one side of my O is significantly thicker than the other side. And on my H, the one of the vertical lines is way thicker than the other one. Then after you have that, again, just leave it alone, let it dry. I'm going to create a very skinny little outline around my speech bubble to really pop it off that background. If you're not a fan of outlines, you could switch up kind of the feeling of this design. I went really pop art with this one, which is fun. I love doing pop art stuff. I don't do it very often, so it was definitely a treat for me. So you're going to do that outline around your speech bubble to give it kind of that extra, almost cartoony comic strip feel and then we're going to fill in those thicker portions of the O with the white paint 
make them a highlight and then over the top of that white paint in the two letters we're going to create another rainbow so the same like I said you guys know what the rainbow what colors are in the rainbow so go ahead and paint a rainbow going up from your O so you've got blue at the bottom or purple depending on which one you want to use as the bottom I believe I just went with blue I don't think I used any purple for that but then blue green yellow orange and red and fill it all the way up into that top little bit of the O and then after you have that we're going to write the word snap in our speech on our speech bubble Whew, words are causing me trouble today so think of it it says like oh snap like you just snapped a picture one of my nephews is a very talented photographer and whenever I work on a design that's like this I have a couple different camera designs if I can find links and put them in the description box below but anytime I do a camera theme design I always think about him and how much he would really really like this one I'll have to send him a little video of it but after you've got all that painting done it's all dry we're going to apply a layer of gel sealer over the background to make sure that's nice and shiny and over the lens and then apply some matte top coat over the rest of the camera and now you get to start working on your photo so on a silicone art mat or any kind of a silicone mat you're going to take and just paint a white rectangle for your Polaroid then after that white has cured only do one coat you want this to be very very thin then I'm going to take some black acrylic paint and I'm going to be adding some outlines for my picture so when you're doing these outlines use acrylic paint instead of doing gel you want to limit the amount of layers in your gel polish as possible so you want to have outlines that you can then fill in so that you're not correcting different shapes with more layers of gel polish so that you know because they're just going to get thicker and thicker and thicker and you don't want that because you need this photo to slide through that slot in your camera and it's going to have a couple extra layers on it especially if you're going to be doing the thermal powder as I did and that's just going to add more so to keep the whole thing as thin as possible just be very cautious about not doing too many layers that's the long part of the story so after I have my little picture done I'm going to start filling in the design with color and so I've got pink for her hair and I did yellow in the background and blue sunglasses I wanted it to be very bright and very colorful and fit in as many different colors as I could to make them as neon as possible so I've got the pink hair flash cure it and then I'm going to fill in the background like I said with some yellow flash cure that again fill in her skin tone with whatever color you want I used kind of a I don't know like a medium tan color you don't want to do anything that's very dark, either the background or hair or skin for this design because the thermal powder on top is not going to become completely clear. So every color that you use is going to darken. So even if you, so just keep that in mind that whatever shades of color you use, that they're not going to look quite as vibrant as they do right now. So that might just be something. So don't use like a super dark brown for the skin or, you know, burgundy for her hair because it's just going to end up looking black. So just use a shade or two lighter than you want the final image to be. If you want, you can add a little bit of shading on her face with a different couple different colors, a little bit of a darker pink shading. Like I said, a lot of these details are actually going to just be kind of missed because it's going to turn a little foggier with thermal powder. So I have my brush dipped into some gel top coat and I'm going to dip that brush then into the thermal powder and mix it as I go on top of the picture to get my sort of a blackout effect on top of what I just worked on. So you don't have to like pre mix this together and have a little thing on the side. You can, like I said, mix it as you go. So as long as you have some wetness in your brush with a gel product like gel top coat or gel base coat, then you should be good. After that's cured, apply some gel top coat over the top of the photo and then you can trim it with a scissors. You can use a manicure scissors or you can just use the regular craft scissors up to you. And then you have your teeny tiny little photo and it is so exciting. I absolutely love this. If you wanted to play around with it, you can make a couple different photos. You could even print off a tiny little Polaroid picture on a computer on printer paper and then just gel top coat it. That would also work if you wanted to simplify that process and not have to paint it all yourself. And then you can just warm up your fingers or warm up the photo some way. For me, my hands are always super cold. So to get the photo to change color, I was holding onto a mug of tea and then I could warm it up and I got it to get nice and clear. So I hope you guys like this and take me in any recreations on Facebook or Instagram. I would love to see them and I will see you next time. Bye.